Okay, so in the last video, we defined the Byzantine broadcast problem, right? So this is where you have n nodes. One of them is a designated sender. The sender has a private input that they want to communicate to everybody else. And a protocol solves Byzantine broadcast if it satisfies termination. All the honest nodes running the protocol eventually terminate. Uh, agreement, no matter whether or not the sender is Byzantine or honest, it should always be the case that the honest nodes uh, uh, sort of conclude the protocol with the same value in mind. And moreover, validity states that in the event that the sender is honest, that common value in all the honest nodes mind should indeed be the one that the sender was intending to communicate, intending to broadcast. And what we saw in the last video was that that's actually all we need uh, to solve um, the SMR problem, state machine replication, uh, in the presence of false under our other assumptions, right? So under our assumptions that we're in the synchronous model, PKI and the permissioned setting. So now it makes sense to turn our focus squarely on this problem of designing a fault tolerant protocol for the Byzantine broadcast problem. So that's what we're gonna start doing in this video. Now I'll give you actually a complete solution to the problem in the next video, that's the Dole of Strong protocol. If you want to, you can skip this video and move on to that one without loss of continuity. But to be honest, the main reason I'm covering the Dole of Strong protocol, you know, is not so much because I really want you to know exactly how it works, but really because this is the right gateway to getting a feel for how consensus protocols work, including in sort of more complicated models with weaker assumptions about network reliability. So in that spirit, in the spirit of just you know building up your muscles, developing intuition about what the challenges are, this video will also uh, serve that purpose uh, very much. All right, so, so Byzantine broadcast, right, it's easy if F equals zero. If you're sure that everybody's honest, then basically the sender can just send whatever they have to say to everybody. Everybody can just believe them. But we also saw that even when F equals one, okay, that trivial protocol is not good enough. Because if F equals one, for all we know, the sender is Byzantine and sends different information to different nodes. So intuitively, what we're going to need to do to handle the F equals one case, in particular the possibility of a dishonest sender, is the honest nodes are going to have to do some additional cross-checking. They're going to have to compare notes and give each other some information about what they heard from the sender. So here's maybe the simplest possible protocol that uh, makes use of that idea. As always, when we write down a protocol, we mean what it is that honest nodes do. Again, Byzantine nodes, they can just throw out this protocol and do whatever they like. So let's call the first time step t equals zero. Uh, and the natural way to start is by having the sender, who after all has this private input they want to communicate, uh, sending that value to all of the other nodes. And remember from lecture one, our default assumption, which unless otherwise noted, when one node sends a message to another node, the sender will sign it cryptographically. Remember that we're only trying to solve Byzantine broadcast under the same assumptions we already imposed on state machine replication. So in particular, we're assuming that crypto exists and the PKI assumption. So all of the nodes know a priori everybody's public keys. So the next time step, time uh, t equals one, right? So if you have an honest sender who really sent these messages at time zero because we're in the synchronous model, at that point we know all of the nodes have received those messages by the beginning of time step one. And this is the step in which the nodes are going to compare notes. So they're gonna basically just tell each other what it is they heard from the sender. Okay, so specifically they will be echoing the message the sender sent them. And remember that message was signed by the sender. And then when you echo the message, you sign it yourself, right? So you attest to the fact that this is the message that you received from the sender. All right, so the next time step is going to be the last one, t equal two. So at this point, the protocol, all of the nodes are going to be responsible for figuring out their final output. So imagine you're an honest node, node number seven, running this protocol, trying to figure out what to output. Uh, sort of two trivial cases, right? If you're the sender and you're honest, just output V star, right? You know the answer, you knew it up front. Uh, if you're a, a non-sender, uh, but you've only, ever heard, you've only ever seen messages that reference a single value V star, output that, right? Why would you ever output anything you've never heard of? So the only hard case is when, first of all, you're a non-sender, and second of all, different messages you've seen refer to different values. Like some of them refer to value V1 and some of the others refer to value V2. And now you have to decide which of those two things you want to output. And there's various ways you could do that, but maybe the most natural way would be by majority vote. Get to output the value that you've seen the largest number of messages for. So specifically, you have one vote from the sender, the message they sent you directly. Really, I guess I should say you have at most one vote from the sender, right? Maybe they're a Byzantine and they didn't send you a vote at all. If they send multiple votes, you can just ignore all but the first one. So you have at most one vote from the sender and you have at most one vote from the other n minus two non-senders. Again, maybe you have one less because maybe some Byzantine node didn't tell you their vote. 
But in any case, you have this collection of votes up to perhaps n minus 1, uh, and then you just output the most frequently referred to value, the most frequently voted for value among those uh, n minus 1 or less votes. There might be a tie, in which case you should just break it in some consistent way. Like, for example, for the alphabetically smallest of all of the values that are mentioned. So that's the protocol, right? Pretty simple. I mean, the sender is just supposed to send out their value to everybody, and then the non-senders compare notes. And they resolve any ambiguities that arise from the, those votes by doing a local majority vote. And I claim that this protocol actually solves the problem, okay? In the sense that, you know, as long as F is one, there's a most one Byzantine node. In fact, this protocol satisfies both validity and agreement. And of course, obviously it satisfies termination. It terminates at the end of time step two. All right, so let's go ahead and talk through that argument beginning with validity. And to make my life easy, let's just make a mild assumption that there's at least four nodes. So N is at least four, F equals one, at most one Byzantine node, and at least three honest nodes. Now, don't forget, the validity condition, like, if there's, a if there's a Byzantine sender, we're totally off the hook. Validity asks nothing of us in the event of a Byzantine sender. We only have to worry for validity about the case of an honest sender. So, suppose the sender is honest, follows the protocol. That means at times t equals zero, it's going to send a vote for its private input v star, which, because we're in the synchronous model, will be received by all of the non-senders uh, at the beginning of time t equals one. Now at time t equals one, all of the non-senders compare notes, okay? or at least the honest ones echo to all the other nodes what they heard from the sender. So now we have to argue that every single honest node outputs the correct value, outputs the sender's private input v star. Now, remember we're assuming that the sender is honest, and so just by definition of the protocol, the sender will of course output its own private input. So we're not worried about the sender. So we only have to worry about an honest node that is a non-sender. Okay, so one of the non-senders may be Byzantine, but n minus two of those are going to be honest non-senders. So think about the votes that are going to be collected by an honest non-sender. So from the honest sender, they're going to get a vote for the sender's private input v star. And from the other mi n minus three other honest non-senders, they're going to get honest echoes of the honest sender's um, vote for v star. So one vote for v star directly from the sender, and then n minus three more votes uh, for v star from the other honest non-sender. So a total of n minus two votes for v star. Now there is this one Byzantine node out there somewhere, so who knows what it's doing. So maybe there's one vote where we don't really know what we can say about it. But we have n minus two votes for v star, maybe one vote for something else, n is at least four, so majority vote will save the day, and we really will output the correct um, value v star. So let's move on to agreement. Now, now notice, you know, when we just talked through the validity case, a part of that is we actually argued agreement in the event that the sender is honest. Specifically, all the honest nodes agree on the correct private input v star. So all we need to prove is we need to consider the presumably the hard case of agreement when there's a Byzantine sender. Now remember, f equals one. There's at most one Byzantine node. So if the sender is Byzantine, it means all of the non-senders are honest. So now when we get to time step one, the good news is that only non-senders send messages at time step one, and all of the non-senders are honest. Remember, we're assuming that the sender is Byzantine and that f equals one, so that means all of the non-senders have to be honest. So that means in time step one, everybody will honestly echo whatever message they happen to hear from the Byzantine sender uh, at the beginning of that time step. And so what that means is that when we get to time step two, at the beginning of that, all of the non-senders will have in their possession exactly the same information, exactly the same um, number of votes for every possible value. Basically, uh, you know, the n minus one honest non-senders just pooled all of their information, all of the messages that they have received from the leader. So because all of those non-senders will have exactly the same information, the same number of votes for every value, all of them decide on their final output in the same way by majority vote with consistent tie-breaking. So indeed, all the honest non-senders will output exactly the same thing, okay? which is exactly what is required for agreement. All right, so this is kind of a nice thing, right? We came up with a protocol. It's still pretty simple. It's pretty intuitive. Uh, but at least when there's at most one Byzantine node, we have what we want. We have uh, both validity and agreement. Now, what's going to be, you know, equally instructive is to see why this protocol does not work, is not correct, when f equals 2. When we have the possibility of two Byzantine nodes, in particular, the possibility of collusion between a Byzantine sender and a Byzantine non-sender. So let's see that counterexample in detail in the next slide. 
So specifically, I want to show you a violation of agreement. So the protocol on the previous slide, run verbatim, uh, does not satisfy agreement in the case that f equals 2. So here's how it's going to work. Okay, so there's n nodes total. Let's assume that n is even for simplicity. There's at most two Byzantine nodes. Let's assume that the, the sender is Byzantine and also one non-sender is Byzantine. And then sort of conceptually in our minds, the other n minus two honest nodes are going to split into two groups of equal size, of size n over two minus one each. And what this counterexample is gonna make clear is that when you're working with Byzantine faults, you even have to deal with the case where all of the Byzantine nodes are, you know, in effect, conspiring to ruin your protocol. And so let's, let's see how that can happen in this particular case. So time step zero, right, we've got this Byzantine sender. It can do whatever it wants. It's going to do exactly what you would sort of expect it to do, given that the goal is to sort of break the protocol's agreement. It's going to send inconsistent messages to the honest non-senders. In particular, it'll send half of them zeros and half of them ones. Now, this by itself, right, is not sufficient to be a counterexample, kind of for the argument that we saw on the, on the previous slide, right? If this was the whole story, this is all that happened, well, then all of these magenta non-senders, they're all honest, so they're all going to echo the messages that they heard from the sender, and then at the beginning of time step two, they're all going to know exactly what votes they got from the sender, and they'll know it's equally split, uh, half of them for zeros, half of them for ones. They all break ties and majority vote in exactly the same way. For example, maybe favoring zero over one in the event of a tie. So they're all gonna output exactly the same thing. So if this is gonna be a counterexample, it has to use the fact that f equals two rather than one, and that there's a second uh, Byzantine node, which you know is gonna be a, a non-sender. So somehow the non-sender has to sort of screw up the fact that all of the honest nodes seem in sync. And here we're going to really see how, you know, sort of conspiracy between the Byzantine nodes can be sort of very powerful. So imagine, right, I haven't written what the sender has written, has sent to the non-sender, right? And because it could be anything. So let's imagine that the, the Byzantine sender sends to its comrade, the Byzantine non-sender, it actually sends it two votes, okay? A signed, a signed version, uh, a signed vote for number zero and a signed vote for number one. Now, if this was an honest non-sender, it would just throw out the second vote, right? It would just ignore everything but the first vote. But this is a this is a Byzantine non-sender, so it's going to go ahead and collect both of these votes that the Byzantine sender sent it. Alternatively, instead of the sender just signing, uh, sending signed votes of, for both zero and one over to that Byzantine non-sender, it can also just send its, its private key, right? And then the Byzantine non-sender could just make up these signed messages uh, by itself. Point being is that now, uh, at the beginning of time step one, the Byzantine non-sender has in its possession, okay, both a message signing voting for zero and a message voting for one, both signed by the sender. And it's now in a position to, again, send inconsistent messages to the honest non-senders. So it's going to forward on the, the vote for zero to the left blob of honest non-senders, and it's going to forward on the vote for one to the right blob of honest non-senders. So now we see that we really are going to have a violation of agreement, right? Because like, think about the honest non-senders in the left magenta blob, okay? So they, they get a total of n minus two votes between the sender and all of the honest nodes, and they're going to be equally split, okay? n over two minus one votes for zero, n over two minus one votes for one. The tie-breaking vote is the one that comes in from the Byzantine non-sender. The Byzantine non-sender sent this particular group a tie-breaking vote of zero, so their majority vote will all conclude with the output zero. Meanwhile, the right magenta blob, you know, again, between the sender and the honest nodes, they get this equal split, n over two minus one votes for both zero and one, but now the tie-breaking vote coming in from the Byzantine non-sender is for one. And so that's going to tip the majority vote and force that right blob uh, to output one, which of course is a violation of agreement because we have two sets of honest nodes outputting different things. All right, so a, a few takeaways from this counterexample. Okay, so takeaway number one is just, I hope this has sharpened your intuition. The Byzantine nodes can really do bad stuff by conspiring with each other. And a lot of protocols that seem reasonable are actually broken because Byzantine nodes have sort of very clever strategies to exploit it. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is that, you know, even if you have a protocol that happens to be correct, right, and we'll definitely see an example coming up next, 
even if it's actually correct, it may be very difficult to prove convincingly that it's correct. Again, just because the space of sort of strategies for Byzantine nodes is so rich, you have to rule out all of them uh, to actually prove correctness of a consensus protocol. Takeaway number three is this is going to sort of segue into the general solution we give in the next video, the Dillow Strong Protocol. So intuitively, what this example shows us is that one round of cross-checking isn't enough. Okay, so if we're going to want to have something that works when f equals 2, we're going to need to do more cross-checking. And indeed, what we're going to see is that every additional Byzantine node that you want to be able to tolerate is going to lead to one extra round of uh, cross-checking. So again, the, the solution is going to be the Dolov Strong Protocol. We'll cover that in the next video. I'll see you there.